this is Steve, Dichroic Glassman. Haven't talked about stained glass in a long minute and dichroic glass projects and such. So I think it's fitting at this time of my evolution on my YouTube channel to talk about a door that really, um, well, changed my life. How can that be? Well, perhaps in my mind it's all that matters. This mind of synesthesia that sees in strange patterns, sequences, and feelings, and emotions. But what's unique about this door, I made it four years ago. Didn't make it for selling purposes. In fact, I made it for something that would re actually surprise you. Nobody knows why I made this door. But I think you, when I tell my story, you will be able to relate to it for the people who are serious about the passion they held for what this thing is that they do. Dance, singing, choreographies, poems, whatever. Uh, several years ago, well, four years ago, by that time I had already made over a thousand panels. Of, of easily maybe even 2,500 when you talk talking about all the clocks and lamps, kaleidoscopes I've made. I've made a lot over the years. Being almost 100% colorblind, utilizing synesthesia without even knowing I was hearing the colors other than just picking wonky colors out. I had no idea the rhythm or rhyme to my craziness earlier in life. But nonetheless, I hit a wall because I was introduced to an artist on the internet of something of a talent and a ability that I'd never seen. Um, or maybe it's just still the timing. You know, you can drive down that street ten times and then finally on the eleventh time see something that was important and you wonder to yourself, <laughs> why didn't I see it before? Well, a particular artist fell into my mind's eye. And I had to go, in the world of synesthesia, you got to understand you live in your own mind. There's nobody to communicate to, your wonkiness, your perception, it's pretty much not accepted unless you can find a tribe, a herd that accepts you for your perceptions. Tasting what you hear, oh really, hearing colors as for mine and seeing visual energy in strange ways that it's not a letter of confidence that might some people might think. In fact, in so many cases, thousands of times, it scared the crap out of me. It's <laughs> still doing it. In fact, it's doing it a lot now where I couldn't have predicted the perception. You could call it a world of fantasy and you certainly would be right. I don't know how other sun aesthetics see, feel, touch, hear, taste, but it's called the mixing and blending of senses. It operates in so many different ways that they're not even really labeling it very specific anymore because there's so much. This is a weird thing that when I face that wall of seeing an artist, I actually have already accrued thousands of pieces, remember? And I hit the wall to say, I need some higher source to tell me I'm, I'm lying that I'm a stained glass artist. This is just four years ago and I've been doing glass for over 25. I reached a point after seeing a person where I had to face myself and say, you're not no stained glass artist, you're kidding yourself. I'm crafty. Well, it's kind of a rough road to go down at 20 years already into the business. Imagine yourself, you've done a lot of shows with your guitar and your band and then you question yourself 20 years later and say, WTF, am I, who am I kidding? I think if you're serious about whatever it is, your mind's eyes focused on excelling at. I think the true ones of us have to. I hit a wall. Hit an absolute wall. As though I couldn't go forward. 
synesthesia, color blindness, didn't matter. The struggles that I've had with distinguishing colors and vibrations and feelings to the point where I can, yeah, I can create some balance. But I had help on this window. I didn't do it all by myself. But again, let's talk at the beginning. The impetus was, who do you think you are? And I, I, to myself, I asked myself, who do I think I am? Pretending to be an artist. So I asked a higher power to give me proof that I'm an artist. The door spoke to me. You can call it an all, in, inside audible voice. You can say I drank too many beers, but I don't drink beers. I don't drink whiskey, I don't drink liquor. I'll have a glass of, I'll have a bottle of wine one a month. No, I don't smoke my head off anymore. I smoke CBDs and it helps a little. It's a life based on transformation. In and out of alcohol throughout my life. Don't kid yourself. I've done them all. Now I'm creating. And there's something magical about creating that's anesthetic to my pain. For me, there's a direct correlation that as long as I'm creating, literally, it's a macabre wiring. I, I, it, I, it, I stumble on how to explain this. But if I can create, I can step aside of my pain body self and do something wonderful. It's my own, I don't know if I want to call it anesthesia, but it's definitely my mental medication.